You're listening to Toronto's number one real estate podcast, powered by Watson Estates. The most successful local real estate investing starts right here, right now. Here's your host, broker, investor, and social media influencer, Bradley Watson. Good morning, investors. Bradley here from Watson Estates, and today is Friday. That's right, Friday, June 12th, 2020. We've made it through another week. We are almost halfway through the month, almost halfway through the year. Here we go. We're going to talk about the news. We're going to talk about what's been happening in Toronto real estate, stuff that's been coming out in the major airwaves, as well as stuff that I've been receiving in my inbox as a realtor here in the GTA. we got some great stuff to cover. We're going to start off talking about immigration. Is reduced immigration a problem for Toronto real estate? The last few days have told us yes. Today, I want to show you a counterpoint and talk about this a little bit more in detail. And then how are realtors protecting the market from money laundering? In case you guys have never thought about it, there is a lot of illegal money that crosses the border. And how is that impacting us here locally in the GTA? And then I received an email from the president of the Ontario Real Estate Association asking the question and actually responding to the question many realtors even have. Even realtors, guys, we get questions too. Nobody's perfect. Are condo managers and tenants or tenants either or, and or, allowed to refuse showings? Can they say, well, no, 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 Mr. Landlord, that's my house, and because I have a sore foot, you cannot come because I am highly exposed to that COVID-19. What does that conversation look like? What do the laws say? And obviously, the backbone of all of this is that there are refusals happening. And so making sure we know what are the laws, what does this say? So if you are a tenant or if you are a landlord or trying to show a property or if you're a realtor listening to our podcast, you know what the correct answer is. Before we get started, thank you guys. Thank you for being so awesome. Thank you for tuning in. We are number one on Google Podcasts for Toronto Real Estate. And periodically, I get loving comments. I get people just tuning in saying, hey, I love your channel. In fact, I got that exact message a couple days ago from on YouTube, an individual named S. Hi, Bradley. Love your channel. Listen every day and it's a great way to stay up to date with the local real estate news. I also appreciate the sprinkles of humor. Well, that's nice. That's so nice. I own and manage multifamily homes and commercial real estate in Burlington, Hamilton, Cambridge, and Kitchener. I have 40 units in total. Please include news from these regions in your future posts. Greatly appreciated. You know what that means. Our family here at Watson Estates is growing. Thank you all for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. It's wonderful to see we are scattered across the GTA. We have investors all over the place. We even have realtors, brokers, all different industries following our info because here's the truth we're learning too we're getting this news at the same pace you guys are and we're sharing it with you and trying to digest it a little bit give it a bit of a real estate flair and try and cut through some of the maybe negative news that's outside of real estate and just keep it strictly real estate do you guys know what news stands for if you didn't it actually stands for notable notable events notable i can't even speak this morning weather and sports fun fact Another fun fact, babies can poop. I, you change them once and all of a sudden there's more brown toothpaste. Last night, we were up like four times changing the poopy diapers. You change it, put it back in his bed. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. You guys want to hear a poop joke? Poop joke? Ah, no, don't worry about it. It stinks anyways. Okay, let's move on, guys. We're going to start talking about immigration. You ready for this? Buckle in your seatbelts. If you're driving, you don't have your seatbelt on. What are you doing? If you're sitting at home, why you got a seatbelt? <laughs> All right. So the last few days, as I kind of mentioned at the start of this podcast, we have had a number of reports. We've seen National Bank, I believe it was, yesterday. I think we saw an RBC one. But the common theme of the negative news, if you will, the reason for a pessimistic perspective on where the prices will go, that is, like you're expecting prices would come down, has been the main reasons have been two things. One, unemployment and two, immigration, okay? Today, I wanna talk about the immigration side because there's an article and I wanna kinda highlight it because it paints a completely different picture than what we've been hearing. And not just hearing from any small source, we're hearing this from major banks in Canada. So it's important that we know both sides, right? If we're gonna frame our thinking, if I'm gonna frame my thinking, I wanna hear all the news, okay? 
So there's an article that came out from the Star, and it actually didn't pop up in your like major news of the day, which was fascinating. But I saw it pop up in my feed, and I saved it because I definitely wanted to talk about it. The article is called "The GTA Population Growth Topped Canadian and American Cities in 2019." Why is this not big news? Listen to this, guys. Toronto in 2019 won the title of fastest growing city in Canada and the U.S., a boom fueled by immigration unlikely to be derailed by the pandemic, experts say. Well, where were those experts yesterday? (laughs) Well, they're from Ryerson University. Thank you, Ryerson, for putting this out. Diana Petramala and Hannah Chan. Hannah Chan Smith. That they are from Urban Research and Land Development in Univers- the Ryerson University's Center for Urban Re- blah, 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 blah. whatever from Ryerson. Thank you for the news. Thank you for the info. They analyzed the U.S. and Canadian figures for the past twelve months, ending July first, and they showed Toronto. Listen to this with the biggest growth in terms of the city and also the census metropolitan area. So the GTA that includes met- municipalities around Toronto. So not only did Toronto win, the GTA won. We won. We won. Raptors couldn't win a second season in a row, but we won something. I want to see parades in the street, two meters apart. The data shows that Toronto was the fastest growing metropolitan area in Canada and the U.S. last year, overtaking Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington for the top spot. First of all, why is it Dallas or Toronto? Like, who else to live in Dallas? I choose T. Dot every time. Mavericks? Meh. <laughs> Metropolitan Toronto grew by 127,575 people compared with this Fort Worth, Arlington, and Dallas for 117,000. So we beat them by another 10,000. Montreal was actually sixth fastest growing at 65,000. But check this out. New York, LA, Chicago, metropolitan areas all shrank over 12 months. They actually went down and New York was hit the hardest. They lost 60,000 people. They lost 60,000 people. So if we're focusing on cities themselves, both Toronto and New York saw established, listen to this trend, established residents move to other cities with high housing costs, a likely driver. So if you lived in Toronto, you had a huge wave of people leaving the city. Okay. Interesting. But Toronto's immigration advantage saw the city achieve a net gain of 45,000 people while New York city contracted 53,000 residents. So What's happening here, guys, if, you want, if, you're, if you're hearing what's going on here, us, us cheapos that are in the city that have been here for a while, we're leaving. We're running away. We can't afford to live here anymore. We're getting priced out, right? Who is taking and buying your house? Who's paying for that? That is immigration. So for any of you out there that says, oh, well, those damn immigrants, they just live off our system. They come here and they take our health care and they're not contributing. They're buying your property. Like they're the ones that are moving into their city. So we're going to start to see incredible diversity in our city. We're going to see incredible wealth come to our city. And the GTA is reaping the benefits of the rest of us running away. A very interesting trend. We need both. We need both guys. The reason our numbers are high in both categories is because this trend is happening. It is a beautiful thing. Thank you, immigration. Thank you for people who are coming to our wonderful country. Welcome. Welcome. Please contribute. Welcome. Canadian cities represent 11 of the top 20 central cities in the U.S. and Canada is in population growth. So Canada is doing good, not just Toronto, but of course Toronto is better. Petramala said, this is part of this report, that has that pandemic has halted international flights, will in the short term slow, slow immigration to the GTA and other cities, but long term, the GTA magnet should remain strong. Absolutely. Like if you're looking, if you're looking, I want to go to a major city in North America and Toronto has clearly been the one in the past. Do you think that because of how we've run our policies recently, that things are going to change? No way. No way. In fact, I would argue it's going to get better, better if in the sense that you're going to get more people. It's going to grow. It's going to, it's going to bust at the seams as it were. Toronto is better positioned for the recovery and for continuing to attract labor with a strong economy, including a booming tech sector. Right, which we've talked about, and this is this is all part of how Toronto is synonymous with tech. We did a video on that. If you want to go check it out, we rock when it comes to tech. We are affordable, right? Things are cheaper here in Canada. We've got a ton of experience. We even have Americans that are fleeing their country because of Trump Nation that are scared for their citizenship because they don't have it, and they're coming to places like Canada and they're finding a nice home with an incredible pay and amazing companies that have set up headquarters here in the gta toronto is overall a very welcoming city that respects different cultures sexual orientations and other differences 
more so than any than many other places. Once the pandemic is behind us, the GTA will remain far more most attractive city or region in Canada, as well as one of the most attractive regions in the world. I love the six. Thank God for this amazing city. We have an incredible place we call home in Toronto. And so when you hear people saying immigration is going to get slaughtered and da 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 guys, recognize the backdrop here. We are the best. We are number one. Number one, guys. And so you know what happens here? So when we start saying, you know what? 35% decrease in the number of migrants in the GTA. That's what we heard yesterday in a report that came out in May, on May 12th, okay, from the Conference Board of Canada. They estimated 65,000 people will be the total bringing in. Guys, 65,000 people, that's still double what Montreal experienced in 2019. They were in sixth place in North America. So let's not get our panties in a bunch here. Let's recognize even in a bad day, we have an amazing environment for immigration. Now, maybe it's not as awesome as it was last year, right? Like maybe we're having to take a little bit of a hit, but so is everybody else. But the trade-off too is on the other end, on the tail end of this in the mid to long term, I guess they're saying by 20, the, the stats I've seen is it's going to take until 2024 before, before travel gets back to normal. That's some of the more extreme things I've seen in some of our articles. But let's say five years, okay? In five years from now, do you think that number is going to be less than 127,000 or whatever it is? No, it's going to be higher. It's going to be much higher. So even the bad news is still good news in Toronto. There's a reason that people are coming here and that reason has not changed. In fact, it's gotten more pronounced. So with international travel, I actually had a comment came out yesterday because we were talking about technology and I'm like, eh, technology. But I actually had a really good comment from a fellow of a name Baseline on YouTube. He's good at commenting. Thank you for this comment. He said, in the future, there will come a time where buyers will buy virtually due to how strong the demand is when less than one month of inventory comes back. That's a very good point. Because before COVID, you guys will recall, we had bidding wars. We had increased competition. People were going nuts. They're going crazy. They're running these properties. You had million showings. Maybe with the comfort level of virtual showings, this will play out not so much during COVID. I mean, it is a little bit now, but maybe this comfort level is being kind of softened. It's kind of like this idea of the electric car. It's like, no one really wants the electric car, but now people are like, ah, you know what? I'm a little more open to it. You know, like I'm getting a little bit, we're easing into it. I think that that might be happening in the virtual side. So on the tail end of this, yes, you know what that could mean? That could actually drive down months of inventory because if people do get more comfortable with these virtual showings combined with what would already be close to one month of inventory or less, if it gets back to what we saw a few years ago, then this is only going to drive that down faster. You'll see it in an hour and put an offer in a property, right? If we're comfortable, that could happen. And even if that's not you, that could be your competition. Brace for impact, folks. All right, let's move on. We're talking about immigration, but we're going to go to the not so glamorous side of immigration. We're going to talk about money laundering. Launder the money. Feds crack down on money laundering in Canadian real estate. It's funny because they put out this news in the Toronto Sun. I haven't seen anything about this in my emails. So apparently, this is a thing, and realtors don't even know about it, but it's a thing. The feds have introduced new regulation requiring Canadian realtors to name suspicious clients, according to Blacklock's reporter. Amendments under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act target transactions of $100,000, saying $100,000 transactions, so at a time, money movement, saying in those cases, realtors will be required to, quote, determine and verify names and addresses of clients or, quote, beneficial owners. So what this is going on about, guys, there is a forms. Every time we do a real estate transaction, we have a form, a FinTrack form we need to fill out, which is just letting this, letting the, the government know when major money movements are happening. And it doesn't just happen in real estate. It happens in banking. I was working, I worked at a, a bank payday advance place a while back when, in my university years, and we used to fill these out. Anytime I think it was over $10,000, we would do it. So there's different forms. And so as we do real estate transactions, and so does your lawyer, by the way, when you go sign with the lawyer, they're also doing this. We have, we're required legally to fill out these forms to protect the market and to protect consumers and all, and all that fun jazz and to make sure we're not getting screwed. Well, apparently they're, they're making it more, more stringent, right? So what's happening based on what they're saying here is they're saying, quote, there's a lack of reporting in real estate has been a major gap in my opinion. Now, from where I sit, from the news I've seen, I know this is a big problem over in Vancouver. I know this is. I've seen articles about it, but I have never seen, up at least re in the recent past, any articles talking about money laundering or, or issues in Toronto or in the GTA, 
which is why I've never really paid much attention to it. I get people commenting periodically. Like I had, I had one person here actually, Lee uh, Jang. This is a week ago, a little bit different, but he said this: mortgage frauds will crash Toronto. Since the last five years, there have been stupid increase in housing prices, specifically Vancouver and Toronto. With stress tests in place the last three years, a majority of people who do not qualify for mortgages have made quote fake income papers supported by their mortgage agents by paying under table money. CMHC banks and government know these facts very well, so they are making loss provisions. They know people cannot run the wheel for long for a long time, especially unemployment like 30% in many major industry permanently destroyed by COVID. Okay, so a little bit different, but you get the idea here. Like the idea of fake transactions, like you don't qualify for that property. And, and that's a little bit different, the point he said there, but I've seen that. I've seen articles like that where it's like, and I don't, I don't get it. Like I understand why people would want that, but why do you, why? I guess it's a question for mortgage brokers. Why, why do people do that? Like, why would you risk your license to, to fudge the numbers? Like let's, there's a reason those numbers exist is to protect your customer. And so then you turn around to help quote, help the customer, but you're screwing the customer really. So like deal with people that can afford it because like, what are you going to do? You're going to get them financially devastated. They're going to come after your license. And like, is that how you're going to run your business on a bunch of, I I don't get it. I don't understand. But, but ultimately this, this source of, you you didn't really qualify for that mortgage is the point there, but also you you shouldn't have that money. Like this money laundering, this is not real money. This is illegally. This actually, in some cases, for terrorist financing, for illegal activity. So this is even more extreme, right? So apparently, Canada. So Canada has a hundred thousand real estate agents, twenty thousand mortgage brokers, and they said this comes into effect on June first, twenty twenty one. And let me see where they mention this point. They said the new rules will address money laundering vulnerabilities in high risk sectors. So, so with this thinking that Vancouver is really the only place, check this out. So, in a 2019 re- report by the CRA or well, CREA, CREA, Canadian Real Estate Association, uh, Transparency International Canada said that Vancouver is not the only Canadian target for criminals who want to hide dirty money in real estate. So, the report was titled Opacity. Opacity? Opacity, Opac- Opacity, <laughs> Opacity. Why criminals love Canadian real estate. Also counted billions, B with a B, billions in suspicious sales in the GTA from 2008 to 2018. Guys, apparently there's a lot of illegal activity happening in Toronto real estate as well. They called Canada a quote la la land for financial crime. Well, we put it that way. It sounds a little more musical. I'm not. La, la, la. Doesn't sound so bad. Well, until I sing it, that sounds terrible. <laughs> so it's not just BC. There's an issue here, and we're trying to curb it. It won't be until 2021. Apparently, it takes that long for them to add a couple lines on our fin track forms. But that's the way it is. In the meantime, things are reopening, guys. It's a great time in the GTA. Things seem to be opening up again. COVID cases, from what I can see, seem to be going down again, which is great. Keep that social distancing. Brampton apparently is a new provincial hotspot with more cases per capita than even Toronto. Hashtag escape Brampton. Put that in the comments if you got nothing better to say. Toronto is going to make face coverings mandatory in public transit. They want to hand out a million masks to riders. We are doing what we can to reopen the gates, get this city pumping again. I'm excited about it. Are you? Okay. So I received, that's some of the big news. There wasn't a ton of news today, but I have some uh, a little nugget of information for you. I'm going to answer a question that you didn't even know you had, but now you have it and I'm going to answer it. You're welcome. And you're welcome. <laughs> so I, I we received an email from the Ontario real estate association president, uh, either yesterday or the day before. And what they were asking is they wanted to share a legal opinion surrounding real estate showings because Obviously, we've got a lot, a lot of realtors, a lot of question marks. In fact, I've even seen clauses that they've like put these clauses out. And then I get an email from my broker saying, don't do these clauses, only do these ones. And then yet I go out in the real estate industry and I receive offers that have the ones that they said, do not do these ones. So then now I'm in this conflict where I'm like, do I tell them like that's not a good condition to have? Like, because it's risky because we're, we're trying to kind of build this airplane as we're flying it. Well, that's the same as it comes to condos, it comes to tenant properties. And so I wanted to walk you through what some of the questions were that people are having issues with. And if you are a landlord or you have 
you're planning on selling a property, anything as it relates to real estate, you definitely want to know the answers to this because this is going to impact you. More than likely, it's going to impact you. The question is this. Are real estate showings prohibited in condominiums or tenanted properties? Like because it's a condo or because it's a tenant that lives there, am I not allowed to show that house if I wanted to sell it? So here's what they said. It was recently brought to our attention that certain condominium buildings are refusing to permit real estate showings of listed properties. Let's be clear. Members should endeavor to use digital tools and remote interaction with clients wherever possible. However, if needed, members, this is underlined, members should know that there are simply no prohibitions in Ontario law, including the state of emergency orders against in-person showings. That's the law of Ontario, okay? That's the law of the land. In order for private showings to proceed, they must comply with all recommendations, advice, directives, and instructions from public health officials, da 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 Make sure you're wearing phys- you know, physical distancing, protective equipment, masks, gloves, cleaning and disinfecting before and after the showings. But the short is, is no, they are allowed. No, they are. <laughs> uh, that's actually a really good way to, to mess with a, a kid's brain is to like answer no yeah no no yeah (laughs) these these things that we say in our culture that are just weird um so so then the question is okay so you're allowed in ontario where don't don't leave it there guys there's a little bit more under the surface we'll get to in a second but this idea of can a tenant or a condo manager refuse a showing Well, according to Ontario's Residential Tenancies Act, the RTA of 2006, provides landlords the right to enter a rental unit in certain circumstances when the landlord follows the procedure set out in the RTA. So section 27, uh, section 2, I guess, 2, 27-2, provides that the landlord or with the landlord's written authorization, a broker or salesperson registered under REBA 2002, that's pretty much a realtor, may enter a rental unit provided that they have given written notice to the tenant at least 24 hours before they enter. Okay, so maybe you've heard this. You got to give 24 hours notice. That's that's how it's been in the past. So that still applies here. But you need to tell them the reason for the entry, the date the landlord will enter, and the time. And it needs to be between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And so they said this. Landlords continue to be legally permitted to enter a unit for the purposes outlined under Section 22.2 of the RTA. So in other words, it hasn't changed. It has not changed. You can still do that. In other words, with no legitimate reason, a tenant cannot say no. Okay, so now you know. If you want to list your property, have a conversation with your tenant, but they cannot say no. However, there's a big fat however, no one with an underlying health condition should be forced to permit strangers into their home during COVID-19 state of emergency. In these instances, it is critically important that realtors work proactively and positively with tenants to accommodate their concerns around health and safety. Well, this is where there still remains questions because if, based on this response, the person, that's the tenant, is concerned for their health, we still have a problem. And so here are some limitations on the ability to do showings of properties. So that way you know, okay? Then we get all the info. If the property, first of all, of the con- is a condominium property, the owner of the property may be subject to condo rules that prohibit real estate showings. So you know how they said, oh yeah, well, in, in Ontario, you're allowed to do showings. Well, guess what, guys? A condo, they have rules. A condominium acts much like a government. They are allowed to make their own rules, right? That's why you're allowed to have certain rules that maybe don't apply in Ontario, apply in a condo. You bought into that condo, right? So they could still prohibit real estate showings. And if that's the case, then you can't do them. At least you're not allowed to do them. I mean, are people still doing them? Quite, maybe. (laughs) But you're not supposed to be doing them, right? Now, when it comes to landlord tenant board, they specifically, that what, this is where the confusion is, guys. The LTB has specifically contemplated showings of tenanted properties that, and noted that landlords are strongly advised to follow the guidance of RICO and avoid in person showings. So here's the problem we have a, the boards, or what we're a part of, the realtors being told you can do a showing. There's no problem. Just give the proper notice, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is the law. That's the rule. But then we have the landlord tenant board, which clearly is standing to protect the tenant here is advising people not to do in-person showings. And so depending on where you're getting your news, there is a ton of confusion out there. And so that's why this email was needed. The Ontario human rights code still applies and requires accommodations for persons with disabilities, persons with illnesses who could be endangered by an in-person showing should in accordance with the Ontario HRC be accommodated. This is going to be your, challenge guys this is gonna be your challenge how do you prove 
I mean, really, how do you prove that the tenant isn't doesn't just not want to have showings? Like, how do you prove the health? Like, how does that look? There's no there's no formula for this. Now, beyond residential, commercial, institutional, industrial tenancies have no specific permissions for landlords to conduct showings under the RTA, and neither do owned or life lease residential properties. So this only applies to non-life leased residential properties, is what I'm hearing, which is most of the people who listen to our podcast. I mean, we have a few exceptions, but generally speaking, I don't know. I don't know commercial as well as I know residential. I'm sure they've got their own things going on, but that's the rules. So if I were to summarize it, you are allowed to do showings in a condo. The tenant cannot say no if you give them all the reasons to say yes, unless they have a health concern that is at risk. And unless the condo board has made it not proper for them to allow showing. So if the condo board has said you're not allowed doing showings. So if you're getting held up by security and it's not written in the documents for the condominium that you're not allowed, well, that might be the time to pull out your red face and act like a Karen and yell at him and say, listen, buddy, I know my rights. Anyways, you guys want to hear my joke, my poop joke? Here it comes. If you don't, tune out now because here it comes. What do women and toilet paper have in common? <laughs> they both deal with a lot of crap. We got us some serious man boys out here. What can I say? We like video games, okay? We could be doing worse things. That's what I always used to say to my mom. I was a brat. I'd be playing video games as a kid. She's like, go outside and play. Mom? I could be doing worse things. <laughs> Anyways, it's been a, a beautiful morning spending time with you guys. I hope you have a great day. Happy Friday. Realtors don't sleep on weekends. And so guess what? I'll be back tomorrow morning with some more. In the meantime, have yourselves a lovely weekend. Take care and keep it real.